Hello, I'm Tony Alcott, and welcome to The Art of Bowls. A lot of people say that the essence of the game is about line and length, but I believe it's about line, length, and luck. In order to demonstrate this to you, I've brought along a club colleague from my club in Cheltenham, Andrew Wills. He represents the youth of today. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Tony. Pleased to meet you. Thanks. Listen, you represent the youth of the, uh, the game. You know, when you started the game, did you get any flack from school? I got quite a lot of flack from school because um, they've always thought it is an old man's game. Did you ever take your bowls perhaps in a, in a duffel bag so people wouldn't see you playing well, bowls? Well, I didn't really tell that many at the beginning. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> did you? Did you play other sports or not? I used to play a lot of football and rugby. Right. And did you find um, that when you first started that the problem about the whole game was purely line and length. That was the main problem, yes. Yeah, and, uh, and obviously did you take any coaching? At the beginning I didn't really take any coaching, I just had to go by practice and see if I could get the line and length. Right, I'll tell you what, I set some strings up and a couple of tricks that we can perhaps, you know, demonstrate to help mm -hmm. people with the line and length. So, tell you what, we'll go along and you can show me how to do it. Right, okay then. <laughs> Andrew, I think one of the difficult things about somebody beginning to play the game mm -hmm. is the actual positioning of the body, the hand, and the line in which to bowl the ball along. Often it's confused because we might shout at our players in the club and say, oh, you've bowled good grass or a good line, but it actually means the width that the, you've actually delivered the ball in order for the bias to work. For the purpose of this experiment, um, I've actually put a string down an intended line, mm -hmm. which I believe is the correct line in which the bowl will swing onto the jack. I've marked the ditch with a white marker to indicate exactly where the string goes to. Right. Um, and a lot of people use a theory that you should actually look on the bank mm -hmm. for a mark um, to aim at. Uh, I think it's better to look actually, if you're going to use that method, to look at something on the bank that's not going to move. I mean, it would be ridiculous <laughs> to use a chair or a bowls bag or somebody sitting cross-legged because yeah. they're likely to move. You've got, yeah. always on a bowling green, you've got a bank and it's always going to be there to look at. How do you cope with actually finding the line in the bowling green? Do you use this method at all? I don't tend to use that method. I just, I just stand on the mat and I imagine the line the wood's going to take when I let it go. So um, you really look for an imaginary spot that's right. on a green. Well, I've got another experiment uh -huh. that we'll come on to later that I think is probably more in keeping with the way that you deliver your bowls and look okay. for your line. Would you like to take one of your bowls and actually, using that string that we've got on the green as a guide, yeah. um, deliver your bowl along that line and see where that bowl ends up in relation to the jack. Right. Remember that we're not really bothered about the weight of the bowl, we're looking at the line. So really we're looking for a bowl that lands near to this dead center of the rink. Right. Okay, I then. think that I've actually put this string on um, along here for your bowls, so hopefully right. I'm right. Okay. <laughs> Now you're obviously dead on the string there, and the bowls that you're using are, have got sort of quite a strong curl on them. Yeah. Do, do you like a bowl that bends a lot? Well, originally I had Thomas Taylor Woods, and they were quite a narrow line. But since I've got the Henselites, they, they bend a lot more. The bias is stronger. That's right, and I prefer it. When you're actually standing on the mat, would you stand on the mat again for me? Okay. Um, if you're looking at that intended line that we've marked, uh -huh. um, what position do you put your feet? I tend to be in the direction of which I'm going to bowl. Right. I mean, really over, well over, or...? Well, my right foot tends to be in line with the line you've put down here. Yes. The left leg is in a straight line towards the jack. Right. And if you're bowling the backhand, which we're not going to confuse people about, uh -huh. because it's the same in reverse, uh -huh. do you actually stand um, a mirror image? Do you actually do the same thing on the backhand with your feet? Yeah, virtually the same, but uh, it's the left leg now which is going along the, the backhand line. Right, so that enables you to get the line. Yeah. And by actually putting your feet, would you like to just turn back onto the forehand? Um, putting your feet in line, your shoulders are actually in the line of delivery. That's right. So, in fact, the feet are terribly important. Yeah. I mean, for example, if I've got my feet um, pointing in that direction, mm -hmm. then my whole body is at a completely different angle. Yeah. And somehow, in order to get my bowl 
to get on the line, I've actually got to do something with my arm. Uh -huh. And that's why a lot of people often swing their bowls across the body, because their body is actually yeah. facing in the wrong direction. Mm. So with you standing um, in that direction, on the forehand, with mm -hmm. your feet in line, then everything is poised for the perfect delivery. Yeah. What about your, your hand? Do you actually try and move your hand along the line before you deliver, or you, do you just actually aim at it? Well, I, just, I just stand there and hold the ball in line with the direction I'm going to go. Right, I think that's right. You often see bowlers um, just move the arm just to give a little bit of freedom in their yeah. arm along yeah. the intended line. The other important thing about looking for a line, Andrew, is eyes. Uh -huh. So we're talking about looking at a target, if you like, uh -huh. along this line. Yeah. Um, do you actually look at it all, all the time and hope that mentally you've got the right amount of speed on your bowl or do you deviate back onto your target, which in this case is the jack? Well, when I stand on the mat, I first look at the line, I then look at the jack, and I suppose I just go for the luck and bowl it down the line. Right. What I tend to do, and it works for me, is that I stand on the mat, I actually look at the intended line, uh -huh. I then look back at the jack, which is the distance, I have a look again at the line, and in a split second, when I'm actually ready to deliver the bowl, I'm actually looking at the jack. I see. So really, strictly, I suppose, at the moment I'm releasing the bowl, uh -huh. I'm looking at my target, well knowing that I've got the line, and I just hope that I can remember is that, is that, that just particular with, line. Does that just come with years of practice? I think bowls are a natural game, and uh -huh. I've said before that you should do what you feel is right, yeah. and that works for me. Now, your method that you've described to me seems fine. Mm -hmm. It seems to be working well for you, and you seem to be picking up the line. Can you now deliver a bowl, perhaps just remembering those three points of looking at the line, looking at the jack, looking at the line, and split second before you deliver, look at the jack. You might find it okay. hopeless for you, but... Um, I'll have a go. Good. The line of that bowl is exactly right. The weight of the bowl is overweight, but at the end of the day, you, you were still in the middle of the ring. Was that different to what you would normally do? Oh, that was much different. I, I found it quite hard then. Yes. It, yeah. it, was, it was, to me, if it unnatural to look at the jack. It would, uh, it would be. Yeah. individuals, it changes. D do you find then that having established, say, we're ex for example, we're using this line to get to that object, mm -hmm. what do you do then if the jack is sliced across off-centre, which happens frequently? Well, I, I just tend to use my experience I've had in the few years I have been bowling to see what the, the line would be. Right. And I mean, it's true to say, isn't it, that that line that we've put down is to get us into the centre of the rink. Yeah. But, but I believe that if the jack was a little further over to the left, we would move that line so yeah. the bowl would actually curl mm -hmm. in that direction. So, yeah. so really... What we would do, when focusing on that line, we would bring our eyes in a little bit because That's we wouldn't right. need so much green. The, the, the bowl doesn't, doesn't have to go to that middle of the green. It has to go beyond there. That's right, yeah. Can you just deliver another bowl for me on the, um, the forehand, um, Andrew? Not perhaps going as far down the green, so perhaps bringing the bowl a little bit in front of the jack this right. time. Right, okay. That's good, and it's right bang in the center of the rink. So, although you've not used this method before, you're not far removed from that. You're actually still aiming at a particular target. Yeah. I'll tell you what we'll do, Andrew. The other part of the experiment is nearer, I think, to what you're used to. We'll remove the strings. We'll go and place a handkerchief on, in a certain spot. Right. We'll talk about it and see how that works. OK, then. OK. OK, Andrew. We've removed the um, string that was giving us the line, and we've left the two strings which mark the boundary of the rink. Right. A rather unusual sight. We've placed <laughs> two jacks on the rink. Uh -huh. We'll concentrate first on the longer one, right. and we'll come to the shorter one later. And on the green, 
we've placed a handkerchief, which we believe is the mark which we've got to bowl over to get to the long jack. Right. Now, I want you to pick up your bowl uh -huh. and see if you can bowl through the middle of the handkerchief right. to the longer jack. Now, I know okay. it's going to be hard to concentrate because there's a lot of external noises yes. um, in this stadium, mm -hmm. which is obviously due to building work going on outside. Right. How do you, when you've got something to do like this that, that um, actually requires a lot of concentration, how do you cope with that, perhaps in a competition? What I tend to do is when I get the wood and I stand on the mat, I try and block out all the sounds. Um, sometimes it's not very easy because if the noise is loud, you get put off quite, mm. quite a lot. Um, if I just try and concentrate on the job in hand, and if the noise is too loud, I step back and wait until the noise is gone. That's an excellent trick. Some people yeah. actually put their bowl down, don't That's they? That's it, yeah. And sort of rub their hands, That's it. pick it up and start again. I, I tend to just step back and calm myself down again, because if it is a competition, I'm quite nervous. All oh, right. Then go ahead. OK, well, I hope it doesn't distract you too much. <laughs> so okay, you can then. concentrate and do the trick. All right. OK, that told us almost halfway up the green that that bowl was going to be slightly narrow yes. because you were slightly inside the intended line. That's right. Um, and also, you did bowl a little bit heavy, mm -hmm. which is something that happens when you're concentrating on one particular skill. Uh -huh. You're obviously concentrating on getting the line right. Uh -huh. And sometimes that when you're concentrating on getting the line right, you do tend to forget yeah. The length. So yeah. you've got an additional problem now. Right. Um, is just to increase your line and perhaps take a little bit of weight of the weight off. But we'll discover yeah. the weight yeah. later. We'll talk about how we take weight off and put weight on. I find that, that when I bowl, I'm, I'm very conscious of keeping my head still when I bowl. Now, right. if I move my head when I bowl, would that actually affect the line at all? Yes, it can. It I can. mean, the, the beauty of your delivery is that when you are actually delivering, you're looking at the objective. And in fact, your eyes are fixed and focused on that. Right. And you're not deviating. Uh -huh. A lot of people perhaps might, in fact, jerk the head, uh -huh. which not only jerks the vision of the intended object, but also if I deliver now and bring my head up, my body and my hand both moved as well. So I yeah. get an, an unnatural jerk, I which see. in fact can sometimes explain why people have very in different bowls. <laughs> it's because yeah. they've probably brought their head up too quick. And it does um, jerk the upper case of the body. So you can affect the weight. Can That's right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's see if I can get this one right. Right, Andrew, already we know that that bowl was on perfect line mm -hmm. and didn't probably get the weight exactly right, but certainly the uh, intended line it was felt absolutely perfection. It mm. felt much better when I let it go. It did. It did. Yeah. <laughs> now let's look at the shorter jack. Bearing in mind we placed the handkerchief on the green to mark the intended line or the arc of the bowl to go to the long jack, yep. it's not going to be the same for the short jack, is it? No. Obviously, because the bias the weight of the bowl is not going to be so great, yeah. um, the bias will not have so, so much effect because mm -hmm. the bowl isn't travelling as far. Mm. Can you show me what line you feel will be right for that short jack? Okay, then. OK, almost perfect line, probably slightly narrower. Have okay. another go, and just to, just to take that weight off. Yeah, I thought I was a bit heavy then with that. A little bit, yes. Yeah. Yeah, take the weight off, even if it's a little bit short for the purpose of demonstrating this. OK. Perhaps that bowl was a little bit wider than we side. intended, but it does demonstrate that at different lengths of jack, the line will vary. So, in yeah. fact, you know, we have to be very adaptable with our eyes 
um, to pick a line out on the green. And of course, as we said before, if the jack moves over, then of course we're looking yeah. for a totally different line. Okay, Andrew, well, we've had a string, we've had a handkerchief. Let's see how we get on without anything at all. We'll have a go then. <laughs> okay. Okay, Andrew, this is the acid test. Okay. <laughs> It certainly looked like you've got the uh, the mark. I reckon you imagine that handkerchief being there that time, eh? <laughs> yeah. Blimey, you're... There must be money on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, yes. <laughs> now, I'm actually going to play the same hand there and see if I can just get round my bowl, which is one of the difficult shots, because in order to get by my bowl, I've got to s take my bowl slightly wider to make sure that I don't crash. So that's when we actually have to alter the line. I mean, I had an intended line before, which was absolutely bang on. Now mm -hmm. my path is blocked, so I've obviously got to try a little bit wider in order to skirt round my own bowl. Yep, okay. Such is the penalty of bowling the first bowl short. Yeah. Not the line perfect, I increased the line, but of course, I knew I had to give it a little bit more weight because I was taking a wider arc, so consequently the bow was travelling farther, and my, it's my excuse anyway. <laughs> Good line again. I think that's slightly wider than your first bow, and it should be probably in an ideal position. It's not going to give me too much of a target. A bit short, I would have thought. Yeah. Now, the difference between the first and the second shot is that my last bowl is behind the jack, so uh -huh. I'm now looking at playing some little bit of weight, just a yard or so, to try and push the jack through to my last bowl. It's a bit of a gamble, but I don't like my front bowl, the short bowl. It uh -huh. looks like it's right in the way, so I'm going to okay, take a chance just to reach your shot bowl. I think you're a mile away. Not a mile away, just got to bend a little bit the depth. And I haven't. Now you change your hand there, Andrew. What, why, why is that? Assuming it's with your third wood, you played one with about a yard on. Right. I'm trying to cover you at the back in case the jack does move back. Right. Did you ever consider putting another one really close to really put me in pressure and to say, well, okay, you know, you've got two back bowls, I am two shots, I'm going to put another one in to put you under pressure. I mean, would you consider that as an option? I would have considered it, but I think I'd rather play safe, knowing that if the jack did go back, I'd be, I wouldn't lose so many as if I'd put another one on. I think that's good thinking. Thanks. <laughs> Well, I've made a real muck up here. I actually played the last bowl wrongly out of sequence. I, see. I should have tried to draw for second wood. Mm -hmm. You're holding two shots. I played a heavy bowl hoping to knock the jack through to my back bowl, the yellow bowl there. But what happens if I miss? Mm -hmm. I'm still two shots down. Consequently, I'm still two shots down and still in trouble. Hmm. If I'd have had that bowl again, I think I would try and improve on this bowl here, try and get second shot, uh -huh. and play the heaviest bowl with my last bowl so that if I lose the end, you only get the one shot. See. Whereas, really, whatever I do now, um, I'm in trouble. I've, I've ideally got to draw the shot round here, or at best, try and stop you from getting any more than one. I see. If I'd been in your situation, I think I would have played a similar shot. 
but that might show the inexperience I've got. Well, it's it's a gamble, isn't it? And mm. I'm well known for, for being adventurous in in, in, in my play, um, but it, sometimes it can catch me out, and this is a classic example. I see. So I'm in all sorts of trouble. It's not easy. I've got to try and get second shot at the best to stop you getting a three. Okay. I'll go and see if I can improve on the last ball. All right, then. Okay. Right, didn't achieve the object, failed short again. So it's given you a golden opportunity to draw in here. Uh -huh. The luxury, I would say, Andrew. The, the luxury. luxury of drawing in here. Is that what you call it, is it? Yeah. I was, I was quite surprised by your last one, actually dropping short there. Yeah. Myself. But yep. I, think, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come on this hand, just draw in round to the back of the jack. And in that way, I can always promote my own. Right. And bearing in mind, of course, that you actually bowled both of those bowls mm -hmm. on the forehand, mm -hmm. but you were forced to put a back bowl in, which you actually played on the backhand. So if I you've see. got a good memory, and you remember uh -huh. the line and the length, mm -hmm. then of course you'll be okay, and I can reasonably expect to be giving you three shots this end. You can, can you? All right, yeah. then. I'll have a go. Pretty clever. That's quite, quite pleasing, that is. <laughs> yeah, well done. I mean, the ideal there, the weight was superb. Even if you'd have collided with that bowl, I think you'd have just touched that and stopped yourself and you've got three. I mean, that's some, the shot that we actually um, dream of. In fact, <laughs> the interesting thing was that that bowl, uh -huh. to actually get onto the jack, looked in the way. Did you think it, it was did. in the I, way? I thought it was in the way. That's why I was, I was banking it, actually touching it and falling in. I wasn't quite. I wasn't in mind to run onto the jack. <laughs> right, Andrew. Is there any um, particular area in your game where you're playing where you you find difficulty, or you've been in a difficult situation? Well, there is. I can refer back to the club championship last year when I played you, oh. and there was a situation where I had a short wood on this hand with one of your woods, and I had an open hand on the right side. Um, the green was actually a bit dodgy on the right hand side, but I elected to play that because it was an open hand. And uh, looking back now, I'm not really sure whether that was the best shot. Tell you what, let's set it up. Okay. And bearing in mind we're on an indoor green, which is very true, and uh -huh. it's a lot easier to play. But we'll set it up and we'll talk about it, shall we? Right. Okay then. Okay. Right. Okay, Andrew. I've played a lot of bowls since then. Can you <laughs> take me through this, Ed? Because I, I vaguely remember it, but but not with the. Um, the same amount of skill that you I remember think. it. I, I don't have very fond memories of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think what had happened is um, I'd set the jack and my first word fell short. Um, with that, I think you punished me for it and you, you put one on. Um, so I bowled again on the backhand right. and ended up round the back. So I think I over adjusted. And with that, I was quite surprised you put a short word in. Now, getting to this stage, I was getting a bit confused as to what to do. So I elected to bowl on the, the dodgy forehand. Right, because remember that, if I remember rightly, that wasn't a really consistent hand. It was it very difficult, wasn't it? I was right. Um, and then you put another wood in behind the back. And by now I was, <laughs> I was in quite a state. So, you know, you're holding two shots, 
you know, the championship was on. So I thought, right, my last option, I'm going to have to draw on the forehand because of these two woods here. Right. And I had the feeling I couldn't get past them. Okay. Now, these two bowls really were in the way, that there were obstacles. That's right. And you, obviously, if you're keeping to the good hand, which at the end of the day is more consistent, it's going to give uh -huh. you a better result. Yeah. Um, perhaps that, in hindsight, the, the forehand was the wrong shot to play. So, having decided that, it's almost like an equation. You look at the head and you decide, well, this side of the rink is so unreliable mm -hmm. because it was outside and the grass was kind of wet and dry and That's right. various patches. The best thing really to do was to say, well, I'm not going to play that side because it's inconsistent. This is a very, very important bowl. I'm going to bowl the side of the rink which is kinder, which uh -huh. is going to give me the best result. So let's look carefully then at this side of the rink. Forget about that completely. Right. Okay. Now the options are to draw in between the yellow bowl and the red bowl yep. exactly to my shot bowl, uh -huh. or alternatively, if you don't like that, you would need to play with considerable weight uh -huh. to get inside my bowl. Uh -huh. Now, bearing in mind that that is really in the line of the jack, uh -huh. it's going to be a very difficult shot to get, yeah. isn't it? Because you've got to just get inside that bowl there in order to run the jack through. Now, I think it's on. I think the drive shot is on uh -huh. if, if you want to play it. Well, personally, myself, I think I would have, would have drawn it. But now you've come up with the option of playing with weight. Um, there's less room for error, I think, with weight. Right. So I think, looking back now, I'll play that shot. So, looking at it, you've decided three things. That side of the rink's no good. That's right. You've got two shots. One, to draw in that gap there uh -huh. to the jack, to the shot bowl, or alternatively, to play with weight, where the options are perhaps that you can take my bowl, uh -huh. which might also take the other yellow one, yeah. incidentally, or alternatively, take the jack through to where you've got two red bowls. I see. So if we're talking about this famous thing that commentators talk about, which is the percentage shot, yep. I would say that that's the percentage shot, because uh -huh. if your bowl is in that area with weight, you're either going to get the bowl uh -huh. or the jack. So it gives you a better percentage than the single one, where in fact you've just got to go through the, the gap to draw. I see, yeah. It's a debatable one. Uh -huh. It depends what type of player you are, what, what type of green it is. Um, but at the end of the day, both shots are acceptable. I see, yeah. I'll leave you to decide. Okay. And I'll see what happens. Right. <laughs> okay. I'd say I was a shade fortunate with that one there. <laughs> well, Andrew, it, it wasn't the result that we expected. Uh -huh. um, it was a lucky one. But perhaps we missed that percentage. There was always the option that you had to have Lady Luck on your side, yeah. but there was that bowl that was heading straight for the jack. We talked about it. Uh -huh. At the end of the day, you were slightly wide, uh -huh. but you got the result. Um, we could say that was lucky, uh -huh. but at the end of the day, that there was always a chance that you, that you would do that. On the other side, if you were offline, there was nothing in the way you'd have sailed straight through and missed everything. So, okay, we considered that one to be slightly lucky. I've got a problem now. Uh -huh. Championship point against me. Uh -huh. I've got to play the very difficult hand, which is the forehand, uh -huh. and to draw the shot. I've no other option. Yeah. I, could, I could try and find that gap there for the jack, but a very difficult uh -huh. shot. So really, I've no option but to play the difficult hand and to draw the shot. It's unfortunate, but sometimes, in a game of bowls, yeah. you are absolutely forced uh -huh. to play a particular shot. On this occasion, I've got to draw on the forehand. Well, looking back in my shot, I think I'd wait line and look there. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> okay.
Well, you still got me. <laughs> thanks very much. Right <laughs> Having explored line, let us look at the other vital aspect of playing the game of bowls, which is length. I believe length is simpler to achieve than line, and with the help of my friend Andrew, we'll hope to discover some things. Okay, Andrew, I'd like you to pick the bowl up and to deliver it at the very short jack, but okay. not going beyond that jack, keeping, it, keeping your delivery very short. Right, okay. Please take note of Andrew's backswing as he delivers this bowl. Before that bowl um, stops, Andrew, will you get the, your second bowl and deliver it at the longer length, please? Right. Would you like to come back onto the mat, Andrew? The difference, basic difference in delivery, Andrew, when you delivered the bowl to the short jack, was that your backswing to the short jack came to there, mm -hmm. and when you delivered to the longer length, your arm came to there. Mm -hmm. One of the difficulties for someone like myself, and presumably for, you, for yourself, is mm -hmm. that we consider ourselves to be natural players, and we do that naturally. In order to get more momentum on the bowl, we've obviously got to give it more power. Mm -hmm. So the law of gravity suggests that the further we put our arm back, the more swing that we can get. I wasn't actually conscious of my arm going further back than my, in the first wheel I bowled. No, but your eyes told you that you were going to throw the bowl at a longer distance. Yeah. So consequently, the brain said, I'm, I need more power. Uh -huh. And something in your chemistry <laughs> says to you, in order to get more power, I've got to use my arm. Yeah. Now, whether you were conscious of it or not, but your step was slightly different. It was. Yes. Can you go back onto the mat again? Just step out as though you were delivering a bowl four yards up the green. Okay? Now, I want you to throw this bowl, an imaginary bowl in your hand, as far as you can. <laughs> and of course, there was only a subtle difference in your feet, which was a foot, but you actually stepped out farther. I see. Now, the reason you stepped out farther was be because when you were delivering that imaginary bowl, uh -huh. you wanted to put a lot of weight behind it, and you actually used more than the arm, you used body weight. You went forward with your body, because it necessarily follows that the further you step forward, in order to regain balance, you've got to bring your body forward, and consequently, the body weight went onto the bowl, which enabled you to deliver it very quickly. I see. The other thing that you did, but you probably were not, was actually not aware of it, was in fact you went forward with your arm further too. I see, I see. In fact that you used the back swing, the forward swing, uh -huh. the step, and the body movement. The four very important elements. And actually you changed all of them for the two different deliveries. I didn't realise that. <laughs> Could you actually just deliver again, uh -huh. so we can actually see that again, uh -huh. a short bowl and a very long bowl? Would it? And again, the long bowl. Actually, Andrew, you know, sometimes our body and our legs are a hazard to us. It's a simple game, as we've said many times, and if we just had to concentrate on the follow-through and the backswing, it would be very simple, because bowling the bowl is like a pendulum. The shorter distance, the less the, bowl, the pendulum swings, and the wider the distance, the harder the momentum. I see. And really, it's as, it is as simple as that. But in order to aid us, bec because we've got feet, legs, and body, we tend to incorporate these into our delivery. And it is important, I think, that if we are bowling on a heavy green, that we remember that in order to get momentum,
we need to exaggerate the delivery using the body, the backswing, the forward swing, and the feet. I see. I suppose it's, you could say that it's not so obvious indoors, but more obvious outdoors. Because it varies so much outdoors. The greens are a lot heavier. And sometimes, if you change bowling green in, in a day, you can go on to a very fast green and a very heavy green. So you need yeah. to be a, adaptable. OK, Andrew. One of the most important things is, for a new player, is actually to practice this. I see. It sounds very simple, and actually, if you use the four stages, it is very simple. But in order to get a natural balance, and a natural rhythm, mm -hmm. practice makes perfect. It does. So you and I are going to have a bit more practice and play a few more ends. Right. Okay, then. Okay, we'll start on the shorter length. I think it's a very short jack, this, Andrew. Very mm. short indeed. Okay. Just your handwriting. Just right. <laughs> Actually, you know, this is a, a lovely paste green, isn't it? it it's it's quite fast. Mm. And the interesting thing is, in Australia, um, when they talk about the pace of the green, they actually put a time clock up in, in the clubhouse or external um, or adjacent to the green. Uh -huh. And in fact, it will put a t give you a time. Yeah. The time of the green today is 15 seconds. And actually what that means is that the bowl has taken from the mat to travel 30 yards has taken 15 seconds. Crazy. And the strange thing is, the longer the time the faster the green is. I see. Because the bowl needs less momentum and travels considerably slower. I see. On a heavy green that might be 9 seconds or 10, 10 seconds, you're delivering it really fast, so the bowl is travelling really fast and, mm -hmm. and slows up dead. I see. And in fact, on a, on a very slow green, a heavy green, the, the games are often a lot quicker mm -hmm. than out in Australia, where the bowls just seem to take ages to finish. Mm -hmm. After reading a, a lot of magazines, I, they said that in New Zealand, the greens were very fast out there. Did you find that a problem? Yes, I did. And one of the problems that uh, British people pl find is that in Australia and New Zealand, you, you don't really need any body weight at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, what, what we did in New Zealand was to bowl very slowly. I see. To, to get really low, so we didn't have to sort of bring our body forward very little backswing and a small step forward and a very slow action because we only really needed to give it a slight touch and we used the flick of the finger. I see. As we've got our middle finger on the ball like so, as we released it, in order to give it the weight, we flicked it. I see. Not using any wrist or arm, uh -huh. didn't need it. <laughs> it's so fast. And that's why British bowlers generally have difficulty in Australia and New I Zealand. See. Because we're not used to it. And it takes weeks and weeks of practice to get back into the rhythm. Did it affect the line and length much, just by flicking it? Yes. I mean, the, the thing is, in New Zealand, the bowl, because the, the ground is so hard, the bowl has very little friction on the surface. Uh -huh. um, and consequently, the bias has greater effect. So the bowls are really bending tremendously, mm -hmm. and um, you need little momentum behind it. So it, right. it really is difficult. <laughs> Talking of difficulty, that's a cracking first bowl. Nice. If I can just manage to reduce the weight, I'm going to be somewhere near it. Start off on the right track. That's right. This is the importance, I think, of I'm probably not going to get the shot from you, but I've got to try and get one very close to get the mm. second shot to stop okay. you getting a maximum of four. I've got a chance now. I'll see what I can do. Tremendous line again. Superb. And there's no handkerchief on the green. <laughs> it's not bad, is it? Now, because those bowls are very close, 
and it's going to take a very skillful bowl to try and draw it off. Uh -huh. I'm going to narrow my line, uh -huh. put a little bit more weight on to stop the bias acting, and hopefully take the jack off those two bowls. Right. How about? Now, of course, we've got the difficult problem now, <laughs> is that the jack is off-center, and the line that you use with your first two bowls is useless. Right. <laughs> so now you're fishing for a new line. Right. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> certainly altered the line, you need to be sliding off that. It's unlucky. Let's just go and have a look. It's, it looks fairly simple, Andrew, but people might be confused to why you actually chose that side of the green when there were bowls there I see. and you didn't actually draw on the open hand. I'm not uh -huh. saying it was wrong because uh -huh. the good thing about actually bowling that side of the jack, which you did, uh -huh. was the fact that you knew what the line was when you yeah. were drawing. So you you thought, well, the jack's off center, I must bring it in slightly narrower. That's it. Whereas that's totally a new line. Mm -hmm. And if we were playing outside, um, it would be new territory. That's right. We wouldn't normally be playing out there. I thought coming this way, I'd have a chance of just rubbing off and possibly getting a better wood in front of the jack. Right. And just drawing it. Okay, I think when we're talking about competition play, with a yard and a half to draw in, my expectations of you is that you're going to beat that. Uh -huh. And you're, the expectation of you is that I'm going to beat that. So we'll go back and obviously it very much depends on our last two bowls. So we'll see who can get the nearest of the last two. Right, okay then. Yeah. I'm going to opt, Andrew, for the forehand here, purely and simply because if I get a perfect weighted bowl and I do wreck on my own, I'm still going to leave you a yard or so to draw in. So I'm going to take the open hand. There's nothing in okay. my way, and if I fail to do to get a good shot, then it's entirely my fault. Oh God. Now, having seen the line you bowled there, I think I'm going to try the same line because I could rest your wood or even possibly get onto the jack. All right, okay. Oh, that's a great try, Andrew. Just a touch too much weight there. That's right. I think one of the great problems of actually seeing a, a, um, a bowl and a jack such as that, you think, well, I've got two options. If I'm just reaching it, I can either turn the jack round or sit the bowl. And there's a tendency that you actually just overplay it slightly. It. But, but it's, a, it's a problem that, you know, we all face. Mm, I see. Okay, well, having bowled the short jack <laughs> and looked at that, let's go and try a long one. Let's try it. <laughs> having bowled to a short jack, We'll now go to the other extreme and bowl to a long one. One of the most difficult things to do, Andrew, isn't it? To, to go from a dead short jack to, right. to a long jack this. And I, I used to always practice long jack, short jacks. Did you? Because the variation is so great, isn't I it? See. I was fine though that I, I struggle with the weight with a with a very strong change in the jack length. Yeah, I think we all all do that. I think mm. that's the, the the art of bowls because <laughs> we we can see the length uh -huh. and and we've got to really gauge it. We've only played to a short jack. We've now looking at that long end and um, there's a little bit of guesswork involved, that's isn't it. there? Gave that one plenty of green then. Yes, you did. 
Would you think you were actually outside the intended line? I was, then? I was outside the intended yeah. line. Yeah. I think probably what you did, you noticed that I cut my line a little bit. I was a little yeah. bit narrower than I wanted to be. Mm. And, um, I, was, I was very conscious of that. Yes, <laughs> and you don't want to make the same mistake. Yeah. I don't blame you. <laughs> Hopefully, I've improved the line of the last bowl. It looks a better line. Yeah. If I can just maintain the same sort of weight, I'm going to be very close. Oh, we're bold. Before you bowl your next bowl, in your own mind, what, what are you going to correct onto that bowl? Well, I'm just going to correct the line because I found the weight with the, the first wood. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to just be just a touch of the line. Not tempted just to increase the weight at all in no. case you just run the jack? It's tempting, but I thought I won't have one in the head, you see. That's good thinking. Certainly looks a good line. Very close bowl. Maybe just a touch short. Maybe, but it's caused me all sorts of problems. Uh -huh. Because I cannot now bowl on that forehand, the same hand as I've actually been delivering on, because I could topple you up for shot. I see. So I'm going to change to the backhand, hopefully just skim inside my yellow bowl, just enough weight to reach the jack in case I just catch it to roll it on. I see. Not, I don't want to change my hand because I've got to find a new line. Yeah. And particularly outside, when there's so much variations on the grass, a new weight. Yeah. Because you always had the option there. Always, always, the, always the double option, as we talked about it before. The presented shot that it was my there were all my bowls on that side of the, of the jack and that I've always got them to hit up with with that shot in mind what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the weight on mine you are and hopefully go for pass by about a foot more yeah on, on, on the same hand on the same hand see a lot of bowlers would be tempted at looking at that to think right here's the time to actually smash it uh -huh. you know do, do you feel it's that's the obviously you feel that's the wrong shot I feel it's the wrong shot because if, if for example I went on the backhand to take your woods out yeah I could go across the head and take mine out the head, yep. and then I'd be in all sorts of trouble. Right. Okay. So it's another bowl near or in the head. That's right. It looks pretty good to me. I think it's virtually the same line as the first wood, is it? Could just get inside it. Oh. Now that's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Right, Andrew. In this situation, um, I've not only got to think about what shot I'm going to, going to play, I've also got to think about what shot you're likely to play. I see. Um, and I think I'm likely to think about your shot first. Uh -huh. You've bowled three bowls on the forehand. You're pretty close. You've got two bowls to turn up there. My option would be that you'll probably, if there's no change in this head, you'll probably play the same again just to reach your bowl to lift it. I've therefore got to try and tidy this head up a little bit, try and make my bowls a little bit more effective. There's a, there's a little bit of a, a gap there. You could actually miss your bowl and get in that hole there and get the shot. I see. So my idea really is to bowl on this hand to turn either of those bowls nearer to the jack so there's not so much of a gap for you. Okay. There is an option, of course, if you want to consider it. I am two shots. You've got three close bowls there. You may opt to, to actually play with weight on the backhand, take the jack through, or to remove mm. one of those yellow bowls, oh. or even both of them. Uh -huh. Because at the end of the day, if all goes wrong, the positive thing is you cannot lose any more than mm. two shots. So I'll go and play my bowl, uh -huh. and then we'll see if there's any change. OK, then.
going to use the same weight and the same line that I had last time. Well, Andrew. <laughs> what a good result there. I say a very good result. I've certainly made it a lot tidier ahead, uh -huh. but it wasn't the result that I ex expected or wanted to execute. Mm -hmm. I was trying there to turn this bowl over, or possibly the back one. I'd got the line right, uh -huh. but because I hadn't got sufficient weight, the bias took over, swung over quite considerably as the weight dropped off, and I was very lucky not to knock your red bowl oh. onto the jack for shot. When the wood was coming down, I was hoping you were going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you were. <laughs> now, um, anything that takes your fancy in, in playing the next shot? Well, all I can really see is just dropping in here with sufficient weight to get to the jack, because I feel that I could play off my own, and if I'm too wide, possibly get a plant to turn the jack, my wood over, right. to give me a shot. When you actually say a plant, uh -huh you mean actually turning that bowl there, yeah. which, which when, actu when actually it's hit, uh -huh. it will turn that bowl over yeah. for shot. Uh -huh. And the other alternative is the slight wick shot, which means That's that it. you actually get in off that and take, and take the jack through. Mm -hmm. Because really, uh, you, you could get it cleanly, but you've got to get through this, these goals, goal posts, really, haven't yeah. you? So I think the positive thing that you've got to remember with this shot is that you want a similar sort of line that you bowled before, but uh -huh. just enough weight so that if you actually do hang on to that, you can push it over, or if you get inside there, it doesn't stop you, but you continue to roll through. I see. Would there be any advantage of me coming up here with a couple of yards, as if to play right through the head? Um, I think you possibly could play a, a, a weight, because looking at the situation, you're you're two shots down. Uh -huh. Now, a lot of bowlers must leave ahead and think, what do I actually stand to lose? Mm -hmm. And as that wing bowl there is nearer than this bowl here, uh -huh. it means that you're only going to lose, if you take those two bowls out there, you're only going to lose another one. Uh -huh. That's thinking, well, I think it's thinking positively. A lot of right. people would think it's thinking negatively, but you've mm -hmm. considered when you play this shot, and it can go wrong, uh -huh. um, what you stand to lose. What you stand to gain at the most, I would say, is a possible one shot if you take the jack through there or turn your bowl over. I think that's what I'm going to play. Off you go. Okay. Yes. Well played, mate. That's Thank a bonus. You. Great. That's an absolute um, <laughs> terrific shot. Yeah. Perfectly executed. Showed us how the yard on shot works. You know, you narrowed your line down, give a little bit more weight. Perfect result. In fact, two shots as well. Yeah. Your old heart's going a bit now. <laughs> having played a short jack and having played this long end, let's set up an exercise which will be really, really interesting. Okay then. You having played a brilliant shot last end, we've set up a real tester now. It looks simple, mm -hmm. but it isn't as easy as it uh, may seem. A lot of people actually are faced with this situation in every day, whether it be a club level or international series. And there's all sorts of complications here because my shot bowl that's actually behind the jack is a live bowl. Mm -hmm. So of course, if it goes into the ditch, you know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I've also got a back bowl and you've got two front bowls. Now, you could possibly draw the most mm -hmm. perfect shot down and try and nestle the jack and get the shot, but it's, mm -hmm. that is really a shot in a million. Mm -hmm. And I feel that the easiest option is 
for you to use weight. Mm -hmm. Do you like the look of that, to use weight on that head? I like the look of it, mainly because um, I've got my two woods at the front, and they're touching and in line with your short yellow wood. Um, I feel that if I hit mine, it will play onto your wood, which will then shoot the jack out to the left-hand side. Right, that's giving you a chance with your last bowl to draw, or alternatively, if the jack goes over the string, it's a dead end, that's it's right. replayed, and you're out of jail. So in a way, I've got two options there. Now, it's interesting, you said that you feel that you'd like to play on the backhand, uh -huh. which is this side, so in fact, you're, you're actually coming at that bowl from that direction. That's right. A lot of people might think the best or op better option is to come from the forehand because mm -hmm. the red bowls are on the forehand side. Mm -hmm. Do you feel it makes any difference? With that sort of way, I wouldn't really think it would make that much difference because if you're on target, you're going to hit the wood in the right area anyway. And I just generally feel more confident with my backhand firing. Yeah. Actually, that's a very interesting point on the backhand f on firing because a lot of players find that the backhand is the easiest hand to, to uh, fire off because when you follow through with the swing, the arm is a lot closer to the body on the uh -huh. backhand because you're getting over to the, to the left-hand side, whereas uh -huh. with the forehand, there's a little bit of leeway and your arm so. can actually deviate, particularly when you're using a lot of weight. Uh -huh. Okay, backhand shot, hoping to hit that bulb plumb in the middle to roll your red bowl onto the yellow bowl and it will spring the jack out to give you a chance with your last bowl if you don't kill the end. Okay. Best of luck. Right, thanks. Very close. good, very good. Yeah, it was yeah. close. I mean, you were a fraction of an inch from getting the perfect result, which would have been the jack out of the ring. But mm -hmm. having said that, you can now see the jack. You can see my two bowls, mm -hmm. and I've got a number of shots that I can play here. And in my own mind, looking at it now, I am confused. Mm -hmm. So I've got to go through the process of actually looking at what's available to me and what's available to you. The very good thing about this head is that I've got the back bowl, so any movement on the jack mm -hmm. should favour myself. Having said that, if you really got my outside yellow bowl and hit that, then both the yellow bowls would go and your red bowl would be shot. And if you're in a situation when it was championship point and we both needed one, um, I've really got to think of how I'm going to make it very difficult mm -hmm. for you um, to either get those two yellow bowls out or to... to um, to draw the jack away onto your own bowl. Do you think there would be any advantage in doing that, drawing the jack away towards my wood? Yeah, I think, I think there is. But I always feel, Andrew, that although the problem is yours at the moment, you're two shots down and, and the game's against you, mm -hmm. um, I've got a problem to solve at the moment because I've got a bowl left and I've got to make it an effective bowl. Mm -hmm. And I think that you obviously at this stage should be thinking about your last shot. Well, mm -hmm. what's the possibilities? You know, how am I going to win this game? But at the end of the day, you mustn't be too concrete in your ideas mm -hmm. because I've got one bowl to play. So, what I will do, I'll endeavour to put another bowl short of that head so mm -hmm. it's in your eye, it's something else for you to think about. I see. And then when I've played it, perhaps we can look positively at your last shot. Yep, okay then.
a nice try that. Yep, I was just <laughs> trying to get in the centre of the rink to give you something to think about, you mm -hmm. know, obviously. Has that bowl in any way affected the th some of the shots that you were thinking about prior to me delivering that? Well, I think the main shot I was thinking about was coming up there, but a few yards on, to play your right hand wood, right. and both of them are go. You've made me feel a bit more confident about it by putting that one there, yep. knowing that if I'm tight, I could possibly get a rub off it and get the same result. Yeah, precisely. I mean, in trying to make it more difficult for you, mm -hmm. I've actually given you another option, haven't I? Yeah. If, you, if you are slightly narrow and you come inside, you can catch the inside of that bowl, uh -huh. which will take you onto your target. Right. But right. Um, that's the name of the game. You've got to try and... I couldn't throw that bowl away. No. Um, you know, I could either make it more difficult for you uh -huh. or more difficult for myself. And I think I've achieved the latter. Right. <laughs> I'll have a go now. Okay. Nearly. Nearly. Yeah. And look, you, you know, right side of the jack, you needed the both bowls without the, uh, without the jack. So, you know, actually, it was a good miss, was believe it? it or not. Because, yes, you were the right yeah. side of the jack, and you were unlucky that perhaps both bowls didn't go. But it felt good when I let it go. Yeah. And it, it, did. it nearly was. Very, yeah. very good. Great. Well, Andrew, thank you very much for coming. That's I okay. enjoyed uh, playing bowls with you. Great. And I'll see you back in Cheltenham. We do. Well, that concludes line and length, and I hope it's not as complicated as we first thought. Remember, the forward swing, the back swing, the feet, the head, and most importantly, enjoy it. Relax, and as I said all along, keep it simple. <laughs>